Hey, what's going on, everybody? So, uh, recently I got asked another question uh, in the comments on one of my YouTube videos about, uh, let's see here, I think it was the uh, the Marvel Universe Phase 5 and 6 uh, Comic-Con announcement video. Uh, same guy that asked the last question uh, about the DC list. Uh, hey, man, uh, thought my perspective was interesting regarding the new Spider-Man show, Spider-Man Freshman Year. Uh, wanted to know what my thoughts were on Tobey Maguire, Andrew, Spider-Man movies that came before, and are there various elements they should incorporate from them or not? Uh, so let's dive into that. First of all, <clears throat> just to kind of recap on what he's talking about, and also because I see a lot of confusion about this, uh, online, he's referring to the new show that's going to be coming out on Disney Plus in, like, I think 2024 called Spider-Man Freshman Year. It's an animated show, and it's basically going to be a mulligan for MCU Spider-Man. Uh, with the MCU, they've already established the multiverse and how there are alternate realities and things don't always pan out the same way in all realities. So that's well established, and th that's exactly what they're taking advantage of with this show for Spider-Man. This is going to be our Peter Parker right here. Very stereotypical, like, early days Spider-Man comics looking Peter Parker. Uh, and then he's got some, you know, very diverse cast of uh, friends and whatnot here. I'm guessing this is going to be... I don't know who this is. I was assuming it was going to be Flash Thompson, but it says Bales. So, no idea. Um, <coughs> forgive me, I'm getting over a cold. Uh, I kind of think this is going to be Harry Osborn, this guy right here. Uh, we shall see. But yeah, some of Peter's school friends. It's going to be a much more uh, traditional Spider-Man story. He's not going to be going to a college or a, not college, but a high school for super intelligent science people. He's going to be going to a normal ass fucking high school like he should be. Because like, what's the, what's, there's nothing unique about Peter Parker being super smart if everyone at his school is super smart. Like, it's like, that was the whole thing, like, he was a, he was a bookworm, he was a nerd, that's why he got picked on. If he's at a school full of nerds, like, who the fuck's picking on him? That was one of the stupidest things about the Tom Holland Spider-Man movies. Uh, something else that's gonna, what else is gonna be going on? Here's a look at some of the suits. This is gonna be his typical Spider-Man suit, you know, very bread and butter. A couple other different costumes it looks like he's gonna wear throughout the series. What else we got? Uh, villains. We're gonna get some... Very, uh, once again, not only are we getting more traditional in, like, his school and personal life setting, in terms of villains, we've got the Chameleon, <coughs> excuse me, we've got Doc Ock, we've got Scorpion, um, I wouldn't be surprised if this turns out to be Rhino, but yeah, we're gonna get some more typical Spider-Man villains, Doc Ock looks great, Scorpion, it's a nice updated look for Scorpion, you can see his tail, uh, typical Spider-Man villains, typical Spider-Man school setting, personal life setting, this is all coming together real nice. And then uh, we got our first look. We got a look here at Norman Osborn. Uh, that's going to be one of the biggest changes about this show is that in the Marvel Cinematic Universe that we know, beginning with Civil War, Peter came home from school to find Tony Stark in his living room talking with his Aunt May. In this universe, for the, 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 the multiverse, the MCU multiverse, uh, he's going to come home and find Norman Osborn there from Oscorp. <clears throat> and it's been implied that he's going to be, rather than working alongside Tony Stark and Stark Industries, he's going to be working alongside Norman Osborn and Oscorp. But as we all know, Norman Osborn is the Green Goblin, and he's kind of nefarious and up to no good, so that'll be something that you know Peter has to deal with and navigate as well in this show. What else do we have going on? Oh, as would make frickin' sense... He's going to interact with other New York superheroes like Doctor Strange and Daredevil in the show. Now, they have come out and they've completely said, this is MCU canon. But, people are like, well, how does that work? Because, uh, you know, uh, we already saw Spider-Man and he didn't go to a normal high school and he met Tony Stark, Iron Man, instead of Norman Osborn. How could this be MCU canon? Well, I already told you about the multiverse, and, you know, Loki, 
the TV show told you about the multiverse, and Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness told you about the multiverse. So if it hasn't clicked into your dumbass brain that this is probably an alternate reality within the MCU multiverse, I don't know what to tell you. But a bigger thing to consider, and this is where I kind of uh, what I kind of alluded to. <coughs> pardon me, guys. This is what I kind of alluded to in my Comic Con video when this was first announced. Is uh, damn it, I didn't even pull it up. Secret Wars coming up in the future, not too distant future. We've got the next big like end game thing is going to be Secret Wars. Now, for those of you who don't know what Secret Wars is, there is the uh, the original Secret Wars was back in. I don't know, 70s, 80s, and that's where Spider-Man first got his black costume. They were all transported to this other like dimension called in a place called Battle World, and they were all forced to fight each other. It was an it was a whatever comic book series back in the day. It's very famous, like I said, for introducing Spider-Man's black costume, the symbiote costume. Uh, this that's not the secret that that mini series though is not the Secret Wars that I think they're going to be adapting for this movie when this comes out, namely because they've done so so much to build up this multiverse idea that I think that what they're going to be going with is more something along the lines of this. <coughs> Excuse me. This is the 2015 Secret Wars story, and I'm not going to get into like the overall plot of this, but just suffice it to say that the, this storyline, this Secret Wars storyline in 2015, it culminated in the entire... Marvel Comics universe, multiverse, whatever, just getting shaken like an etch a sketch and reformed into something new. So I think that is more or less where they're going to be going with this. They're going to kind of, when this is all said and done right here, I think we're going to be looking at a shaken up and reformed MCU. And I wouldn't be surprised if they take that opportunity to kind of like shake the etch a sketch on Spider Man, like they tried to do with no way home but there's so many like plot holes and discrepancies with that that it didn't really work i think with this they're going to be like oh the the tom holland the three tom holland movies you know those those never happened fuck off and instead they're going to go the main continuity is now this spider-man freshman year now do i think this is a good thing or a bad thing personally i think it's a good thing and here's why uh everyone loves spider-man spider-man is a very beloved superhero American pop culture icon, and the new, the newer Sony movies, the Tom Holland did the character dirty. That's just a fact. All right, it took they they there was nothing in those movies that was like the the classic traditional Spider-Man that everyone knows and loves. Nothing, nothing about those movies resembled that at all. Like there's no there's no Oscorp, there's no Osborns. You know, uh, his best friend is Ned Leeds, who, that was some out of left field shit, making Ned Leeds his high school best friend. Uh, there's no Mary Jane, uh, there's just this girl named, whose initials are MJ, and she's kind of a punk emo chick, uh, and then Liz Allen is the Vulture's daughter for some reason, and... There's no Daily Bugle. He doesn't work for the paper. He doesn't take pictures of Spider-Man. There's no there there was a J. Jonah Jameson, but it was bullshit. There was, you know, there's no there's no that dynamic was missing. There's no Betty Brant. There's no Gwen Stacy. There's there's nothing. There's nothing about it that was like trip typical Spider-Man. Tom Holland shined in Civil War, Endgame, and uh Infinity War shined in those movies in his own solo movies it's just like what the fuck this is not spider-man this is not this is sony trying and marvel i guess they're trying so desperately to 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 live in this idea of oh you you have to constantly try new things and innovate you have to you have to be artistic and creative and no 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 fuck off with your dumb bullshit fuck off just follow the formula. Just follow the formula. And the formula is Peter Parker is Spider-Man. Goes to high school. Normal high school. Flash Thompson is his bully. Harry Osborn is his best friend. Norman Osborn is Harry Osborn's dad. Norman Osborn becomes the Green Goblin. There's also other supervillains like Doc Hawk, Rhino, Scorpion. 
uh, chameleon. He meets other New York superheroes like Daredevil and Doctor Strange. He's a young kid. Uh, Aunt May is old. He cares about her a lot. His first love, in- serious love interest is Gwen Stacy. She dies. Then he meets Mary Jane. She's a bitch. Like, that's Spider-Man. That's the formula. Follow the fucking formula. Why do you think that the Tobey Maguire movies, even though the third one is, and this is kind of where I'm touching on what this guy asked about the aspects of the Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield movies and what I, what from those I think should be incorporated. Damn near everything. Because they had everything that the Tom Holland movies lacked. Everything. Now, I get it. The Amazing Spider-Man 2, not a great film. But the Amazing Spider-Man 1 was a, was a, I thought it was a solid reboot. And I thought it had potential. You know, there, and then to, to get on to the, the Tobey Maguire movies, why are those, even though 3 is kind of meh, why are those considered often the best? It's because they stuck to the fucking source material and followed the fucking formula. They didn't go, how can we make this unique? How could we just, like, spice things up and make this, like something that no one's ever seen before like let's put our own little spin on it let's be creative let's be let's be imaginative let's be artsy no follow the fucking formula follow the source material follow the formula they did that with the toby Maguire movies and they did it with amazing spider-man one and it worked it was successful also people like the chemistry between andrew garfield and emma stone was great and people liked that they were introducing Gwen Stacy for a, sta- for a change instead of jumping right into Mary Jane. Because, once again, that's source material and comic book accurate. They liked how the first movie included the death of uh, Captain Stacy. And then the second one included the death of, had the death of Gwen Stacy. Like, these, the, the, the movies, the Andrew Garfield movies were on track. I think with, well, the second movie won shit villain. Like, it was just a shit, like, uh, Jamie Foxx's Electro was a shit villain. It made no sense. He was so cringy to watch. Uh, their logic was just bullshit. Out. Like, he falls into a vat of electric eel. What the fuck are you talking about? He falls into the vat of electric eels. It's like in the Sandman. The Sandman and Spider-Man 3. This is why Spider-Man 3 is the, the worst one. Like the, uh, Without Venom, and even that version of Venom is a perverted travesty. But like the initial villain was, the, like, like, at the beginning, it's Sandman. Guy falls into a big vat of sand that has electricity running through it. It turns him into a sand. What the fuck are you talking about? Like, it just got stupid. It just got silly. Green Goblin. Oh, he was testing a performance-enhancing drug. Basically something like the Captain America Super Soldier Serum, and it fucking went wrong and made him crazy and gave him split personality disorder. And his other personality is a psychopath that thinks it's a goblin. That's interesting. Doc Ock, these arms are like AI robo tentacle arms and they took over my brain because the inhibitor chip got broken that's interesting but these people who are just like they get turned into these aspects of nature just by being exposed to that element in nature plus a little bit of sci-fi bullshit like oh a vat of electric eels plus some sci-fi bullshit Oh, a big combine of sand plus some sci-fi bullshit. No, that's dumb. That's fucking stupid. But that's really what hurt The Amazing Spider-Man 2, was just a shit villain. Uh, I liked that they brought in Harry Osborn. I liked Dane DeHaan as Harry Osborn. I thought it was an interesting take that like they'd been friends before, and then Harry, like, close friends, and then Harry went away, and now he was back. And then also the... It was just a little too much of a soppy love story. I know that they were tr- really, really trying to build that up because they knew that at the end Gwen was going to die and they wanted that that to land. They wanted that to have emotional weight. So they were really building up this soppy love story. But, I, you know, I, I'm not even going to chalk it up to the, the soppy love story. Because here's the thing. If the action scenes with his villain in that movie being Electro, if the action scenes in there that broke up the soppy love story, if those action scenes had been good then it would have been fine. But it was just like soppy love story, bullshit action scene with a bullshit villain. Soppy love story. So that's why Amazing Spider-Man 2 sucked. But Amazing Spider-Man 1 was fine. More than fine. I, I give it a solid A, letter grade. Uh, it was it was good. I enjoyed it. And then <coughs> the villain in that one was fine. This dude is trying to use uh, like animal... He's trying to create new drugs from, like, 
the genetic the genetic material DNA of animals. And he's trying to regrow his missing arm. He tests it on himself, and it kind of works, but then it turns him into a lizard. Okay, cool, that works. You know, I can I can I can get on board with that. That's better than just like he's the Sandman. Why? Because he got electrocuted with sand. Oh, he's Electro. Why? Because he got electrocuted. Like, that's just fucking stupid. But, yeah. Amazing Spider-Man 1 was fine, and Spider-Man 1 and 2 with Tobey Maguire were great films. And these were all great films because they stuck to the Spider-Man formula. They followed the source material, took heavy inspiration from it. They didn't try to think outside the box and be unique and artsy and creative. We got to think of our own thing and innovate and be imaginative. No, just follow the cold, calculating, scientific formula. Follow the formula. Jesus, fuck. If these people making this show, clearly they already have an animation style down. I don't know how much of a story plot, storyboard plot they have outlined, but these people making this show, if they want this show to be a hit, that easy, easy, I can tell you exactly how to do it. Watch the entirety, the entirety of the spectacular Spider-Man animated series and then emulate the absolute fuck out of that to the maximum amount that you possibly can. Boom, instant hit. Why? Because the spectacular Spider-Man was a hit, and people often call that the greatest Spider-Man animated series of all time. It, it is. It is the greatest Spider-Man animated series of all time. Spectacular Spider-Man is that. So guess what? If you copy something that was done well, your copy will do well. It's kind of like, in, I can't believe this is going to sound shitty, but it's like in school, if you cheat and copy the answers of the person in front of you who has the right answers then you too have the right answers and you get a good grade on the test just just copy just copy just do what was already done well just emulate that shit like why the spectacular spider-man ended in the first place i have no fucking idea but it was such a good show so that would be my advice just watch the absolute fuck out of Spectacular Spider-Man and then emulate as much of that as possible. And your show will be a success. And also, I really hope... Uh, Spider-Man is a guy, he punches his villains. He punches them, he kicks them, he throws them around. He physically hurts people. They're bad people, but he physically hurts people. So, just because this is a cartoon... Don't sit there and be like, it has to be non-violent for the kiddo. No, fuck the kiddos. Fuck them. Also, more importantly, and a better argument, do you really think that there are any parents out there in the world who are going to let their children watch this, but they did not let their children go see Spider-Man No Way Home, where he beats the living fuck out of the Green Goblin? Like, just punch, punch, punch again and again and again to the Green Goblin's head. You think that there are parents who are going to let them watch this, but not that? No, they let them watch both, because it doesn't fucking matter. So if I don't see Spider-Man beating some ass in this show, fuck this show. That's my take on that. So, yeah, that's my take on that. Uh, I see a lot of potential for this show to do well. However, I could also see them fuck it up entirely. So, yeah. Depending on how they do it, if it works out well, then I hope my prediction about them using Secret Wars to just kind of like, kind of, you know, push it into, oh, uh, Secret Wars, shake the etch sketch uh, draw something new real quick. Oh, look at that. Spider-Man freshman year was always, it, it's the main continuity now. I, I could get along with that if they do this well. If this turns out to be a bag of ass, I don't know. I don't know what to tell you. But uh, in terms of what was great about like the Andrew Garfield and Tobey Maguire movies, that's self-evident. They looked at the source material, they followed the source material, they followed the formula, and they didn't try to get too creative, artsy-fartsy with it. So that's the deal with that. So that's my take on this. Let me know what you guys think. Leave some comments below, get the discussion started. To the guy that asked the question, I hope I answered your question. If not, sorry, that's the best I got. Uh, but yeah, leave some comments down below. If you like this video, please hit the like button. That really helps out my channel. If you want to help out the channel anymore, check out some of my other videos and maybe subscribe. Other than that, I'll talk to you guys later.